Hello everyone and welcome to the classroom guys. My name is Larry and today I'm going to introduce you to the approach to chest pain. Chest pain is one of the most common symptoms that you might attend to during an on-call in the ward. Do you know what to do and how to approach it? This video will not guide you to treat each specific disease, but rather give you a general approach for this symptom. When being informed of a patient complaining of chest pain, you need to know what you are dealing with. Is it a life-threatening condition, such as myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolism, arctic dissection, or a tension pneumothorax? How quickly should you go and attend the patient? This is very relevant, especially during a busy on-call. And if you are informed over the phone, ask for an immediate or STAT ECG, if not already done. Like any emergency in the ward, our aim of approach is to stabilize the patient, identify the cause, and treat the cause. Chest pain is worrisome because the differential diagnoses range widely between non-emergency conditions and life-threatening conditions. Thus, the patient should be attended STAT and an assessment carried out by the bedside to determine if the condition is a real emergency. Upon reaching the patient's bedside, perform immediate assessment of the airway, breathing, and circulation. Check the patient's GCS, vital signs, and look hard for signs of hemodynamic instability. If the patient has signs of being unstable, such as altered mental status, shortness of breath or desaturation, tachycardia or hypotension, start cardiopulmonary resuscitation following the ACLS protocol. It is vital to call for help, get senior doctors on board, and inform your medical officer on call to participate in resuscitating the patient. Prepare for intubation if necessary. Set intravenous large-bore brannulas and draw blood for investigations. Give intravenous boluses of fluid if needed. While resuscitation is ongoing, identify the cause of chest pain that has caused the abrupt deterioration. There are myriad causes of chest pain, and although all may initially appear very similar, those deadly diagnoses will have very important red flag signs for us to look out to in our targeted history and focused physical exam. We need to recognize and remember all of the deadly diagnoses which are potentially lethal. These include myocardial infarction, aortic dissection, tension pneumothorax, pulmonary embolism, pericarditis with tamponade, and esophageal ruptures. It's important to obtain a clear history of the onset and evolution of chest pain, with particular attention to details such as the location, quality, duration, and aggravating or alleviating factors. Classical angina presents with substernal chest pain that's often described as squeezing or pressure-like. It often radiates to the arms or jaw and is made worse by exertion or made better by rest or nitroglycerin. It may be associated with diaphoresis, nausea or shortness of breath. Pericarditis or pericardial effusion will have sharp left-sided pleuritic positional chest pain and is associated with shortness of breath or recent illness or fever. Pneumothorax has a sharp pleuritic unilateral chest pain and is associated with shortness of breath or recent trauma and cough. Meanwhile, pulmonary embolism demonstrates a sharp pleuritic non-radiating chest pain and is associated with shortness of breath and sometimes unilateral leg swelling. Arctic dissection has an acute onset of chest pain, maximal at onset and described as tearing or ripping, with radiation to the back. It is associated with focal weakness or numbness. Esophageal rupture usually has a sharp chest pain and radiates to the abdomen and is associated with shortness of breath or hematemesis, and this occurs after bouts of vomiting. By considering the differential diagnosis with the history that had already been obtained, perform a focused physical examination. Acute coronary syndromes usually have non-specific signs. They may be associated with diaphoresis, hypotension, crepitations on the lung, or pedal edema. Pericarditis or pericardial effusion may have muffled heart sounds and a raised JVP. 
Findings that suggest pneumothorax include diminished or absent breath sounds, hyperresonance with percussion, and asymmetrical chest expansion. Pulmonary embolism can have low oxygen saturations, tachycardia, normal breath sounds on auscultation of the lungs with an associated unilateral leg swelling. Arctic dissection can have high blood pressure, unequal pulses, unilateral weakness, or a murmur. Esophageal ruptures have low blood pressure, tachycardia, epigastric tenderness, or subcutaneous crepitus. This is the algorithm for the approach to chest pain. Pause the video and carefully read it through. I hope that it will help you during your on-call. If you found this session helpful, please give us a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to this channel. We'll see you next week.